Of today, Daf Yomi is Sota Daf Hey Sota Five. So Daf Yomi tells us as Hara three lines on the top on five Hey, as Hara let God say Aruach Minai. And how do we know that it's not just a bad quality to be arrogant, but the Torah actually prohibits it? That it's a prohibition from the Torah. So Amar Rabba Amar Ziri. It says in the pasuk in Jeremiah, Shimu Vazinu Al Al. Listen, here, do not become arrogant because God has spoken. So that means don't become arrogant. It says in the curses that it says that what will happen is that you will become arrogant. The Ram of Avcha, you'll become arrogant. And then you'll forget everything that Hashem took said to you when he took you out from Egypt. So Vixiv and also says he shamacha pentish kachas Hashem kacha. We know that there's a prohibition from the Torah against forgetting God. So if you're arrogant, that's going to cause you to forget. Anytime it says any of these words, he shamar pen and al, these are these are the key words that tell us that this is a prohibition from the Torah. Darash Rav Avira, Avira expounded, and Zimnin Amr Allah Mishmed Ravasi, Zimnin Amr Allah Mishmed Ravami. Said in the name of different people, whoever is arrogant is self mismite. In the end, this person will be diminished, diminished, as it says in the Pasuk in Job. Romu ma'at ve'inenu. So they will be romu. They will they will be exalted, and then they will be diminished. V'shema ta'amar yeshno ba'olam. But lest you say that there will at least still be an existence in the world. Ta'amolomer. So the next the next word in that job in that pasuk from Job says ve'inenu. They will no longer be there. V'imchoser bo. But if they do chuba, if they repent, then they have the ability to undo the bad that they've done and to <coughs> die in their proper time like Abraham. And this is the end of that verse, as it says, who, as it says at the end of that verse, v'hum hu kakol yikfitsun ukirosh shiboes imalu. So this is the verse from Job. So it says, what does that mean? That if they become arrogant, they will go back to their face, they will ret- repent, and then they will man- they will humble themselves. Then then they will go out of this world. They will die about those about whom it says the word call. Who are those people about whom it says call? Because it says about them these words, because with Avram it says, Hashem Beirachas Avram Bakol. By Yitzhak it says, and by Jacob it says, this, this was a Gemara in Baba Basra, Daf Yudzayin. And then it says, uh, continuing with that same Pasek, but if they don't repent, like that. Head of a stalk, they will be cut off. My ukarosh shiboet. What does that mean? Like the head of a stalk, they'll be cut. They will be cut off. Rav Huna, Rav Chista, Chad Amar. One says this means kisasa de shibalta, like the beard of a stalk. The Chad Amar kishiboet atzma, like the stalk itself. Bishlam Amar Amar kisasa de shibalta. It makes sense according to one who says it's like the beard of a stalk. I know the chsev ukarosh shiboet. That's why it says like the head of the stalk. Elaman Namar Kishi Bolta Hasman at the stalk, like a stalk itself. Why does it say, my Kirosh Shibolet? Why does it say, like the head of a stalk? So, Amar Vazi, Chain Tanan de Beri Shmo, Mashal Adam, it's a parable for a man. Shinichnas Atok Sadeo. He enters into his field. Gavo Gavo Humulaki. What does he chop down first? The tallest ones. The tallest trees get knocked down first. Tallest stalks get knocked down first. And it's the same idea. That if you're going to be tall, arrogant, you're going to be knocked down first. So this is a lesson in humility.
And then we, we're continuing along the same message of humility as it states in the Pasuk. Here now we're going to cite the verse from Isaiah. Kiko Amar, Ram Venisa, Shokhen Ad, Vekadosh, Mom Aron, Vekadosh, Eshkon, Betaka, Ushfar, Ruach, Achayot, Ruach, Shfarim, Achayot, Rev, Nidkaim. Uh, so, so I'll translate the Pasuk that this Kiko Amar, this is what he said those who are exalted, the, those up high and dwell in the mighty, that's where I dwell. But those who are Shafal Ruach, God goes down to sustain them, to sustain God, sustains the spirit of the lowly. So, let's see what the Gemara does with this Pasuk that the Kau Shafal Ruach, those who are humble and lowly, God sustains them. So, so one, there's two ways that God could sustain, could, could sustain the humble. Either he could bring the humble up to God, or God could, could go down to the humble. So which one is it? So, that, so which one is it? So therefore, the that's why they have a dispute about it. And the Gemara says, "Mistamra command Amar ani es daka." It's more more logical to assume that God is the one who goes to the humble. Shari Hakadosh Baruch Hu imniach kol harim v'gvos. God lowered down all the mountains. Ve'hishres shchinasu al har Sinai, meaning to say God abandoned all the tall mountains and put His divine presence on Sinai. This is, uh, this is like a dispute there. Rebelli Melcher and Mzusha were once having a dispute. How do we come closer to Hashem? Do we first start by thinking about God's greatness? Or do we think, first start by thinking about the lowliness of man? And they went to Magad Mezrich, and Magad Mezrich says, you have to first start thinking about the lowliness of man. So it says that Hashem Yisbarach left all the tall mountains and put his spirit on the mountain of Sinai. Below Gavah Har Sinai Lamala. And he didn't lift Sinai up above to heaven. God went down to Mount Sinai. Amar of Yosef, a person should always learn from his creator. God left all the mountains and hills and put his divine presence on Sinai. There's another Gersi here. It says, He left all the big trees. And he put his divine presence on the small burning bush. Whoever has arrogance, it's appropriate to knock him down like a shera tree. It says, it says in one verse, it says in one verse in Isaiah, it says, that those who are very tall will be chopped down. And the ashrayim, those idolatry, will be cut down. So therefore, those who are arrogant, you should cut down like the achera, this idolatrous tree. Whoever is arrogant, ain't afro nina air. His his earth that he's buried in will not be moved, meaning he will not be resurrected. As it says, "Ikitu veranenu, wake up and rejoice." Shochne afar, those who dwell in the earth. Shochve ba'afar lo nemar. Doesn't say those who are lying in the earth. And what shochne afar? Only those who dwell in the earth. Misha nasei shachen lo afar b'chayav. Whoever has become a neighbor to the earth in his lifetime, such a person will indeed be capable of, will indeed be worthy of the resurrection. Whoever has arrogance, the divine presence will cry over him. And it states, that this is the pasuk from Psalm 138. Uh, so, and, and the pasuk is telling us that somebody... Uh, So that that he that Hashem is crying over those who are arrogant. So then the pasuk says, Dar, then the ex- exposition in Darsha Vavira Vitema Rabbi Eliezer Bo Reishol Kamidas Hakadosh Baruch Hu Midas Basar Adam. 
come and see that the attributes of our God are not like the attributes of a flesh and blood. By the way, I heard this. I was listening to Rabbi Rausner share, and he quoted Rabbi Elvaja Yosef, who said, what does it mean, Moshe kibel Torah mi Sinai? Moshe received the Torah from Sinai. What does that mean? From the qualities of Sinai, from the quality of humility, that's what made it worthy to receive the Torah. So, okay. Come and see that the attributes of God are not like the attributes of flesh and blood. A flesh and blood person, somebody who's tall sees somebody else who's tall. Or somebody who's high class sees somebody else's high class. He doesn't see the humble. Uh, the high class doesn't see the humble. God's attributes are not like that. Who Gavoa? God is high, the highest. The Roa is Hashafal, and he sees the lowest. As it says, Kiram Hashem Vishafal. Kiram Hashem Vishafal year act. God is exalted, but he sees, but he sees uh, those who are low down. The Gavoa mean Merchaki but all those who are high, he only knows from far away. Okay, so then the verse continues. Whoever has arrogance, God says, The world isn't big enough for both of us. As it states in the verse in Tehillim, Those who are gossiping about their friend in secret, him I will destroy. Those who are lifting up their eyes in arrogance and with a wide heart, those are the ones that will not be able to sustain. What does that mean? Also, don't read him. He won't be able to live with me. Some say that this refers to a misapprehension and her, first to those who are gossiping. It says, the beginning of that verse says, those who are gossiping about their friend in secret, I will destroy. Whoever has arrogance, if you have arrogance, even a small uh, spirit, like a worm, is going to destroy him. As it says in the verse in Isaiah, the wicked ones will be sent back like the sea. And so now we say, we expound the verse. The wicked ones will be sent back like the sea. Just like the sea has a lot of water in it, and a small wind can basically destroy it or move it off of its place. Adam Shemuel Revias, a person who only has a quarter will of blood inside of him. How much more so will this person get destroyed by his arrogance? A Torah scholar needs one eighth of a one eighth of hum- of arrogance. A little bit of arrogance you need. Well, some say that this is not arrogance, but really it is. It's pride. That's what Rabbi Salvation said. It's the difference between pride and arrogance. But the Vilna Gon said, what does it mean, the pshat of one-eighth of one-eighth? How much arrogance does a tzaddik have? So he, it's a well-known commentary of the Vilna Gon. That if you look at the eighth parasha, that's Vayishlach. And the eighth pasuk of the eighth parasha says, Yaakov Avinu says, I'm not worthy of all the kindness. I, I became diminished because of all the kindness that God did for me. So the eighth pasuk of the eighth parasha talks about katonti, being diminished. That's the amount of arrogance you're allowed to have, like, like Yaakov Avinu when he says the word katonti. Number of Huna Bred Rabbi Yeshua, Kisasa. So he says, that little arrogance crowns a Torah scholar, like the beard of a stalk. 
Meaning to say that it's appropriate for Tama Chacham, for a Torah scholar, to have this little, little, little bit of arrogance. So Rava says, if he has arrogance, he's going to, he's worthy of being excommunicated. And if he doesn't have arrogance, he's worthy of being excommunicated. He says, I don't want in, and I don't want any part of it. Uh, is it an insignificant thing that God says that it's an abomination to Hashem, whoever is arrogant? So I don't want any part of arrogance. He says, a person's prayers are only going to be heard if he makes... Uh, Himself soft like flesh. Mason Mathematic Rashi says, just like meat is flesh, just like meat is soft, but not like a stone which is hard. Our prayers are only heard if we make ourselves soft. As it states, Vayami de Chodesh Bechad Show, as it states in Isaiah, every single month, Mine Shabbos Bishabas, so every week, Yavokal Basar, every flesh needs to come, which Tachavosa Fanai to bow down before me. Says God, and uh, so you see that you have to bow down before God. Amar Abizera Basar Ksivbe. Amar Abizera. So Rabbi Zera says, says Rabbi Zera. It says Basar Ksivbe. Venir Pa. It says by the, the Rashi explains what this is a reference to. It says by Tzaras Uvasar Kiebo Baoro. When it comes to the flesh, and it's describing the tzaras, it says the flesh will be healed. But when it talks about a man having the, the tzaras, it says, Adam kiev or nega tzaras. But it doesn't use, Rashi explains, by, a, by the reference to an Adam, to a man, it doesn't say veneer pa. So we see from here, says Rashi, that somebody is who is soft, like flesh and humble, will be healed from the afflictions that come upon him. But somebody who is hard like a stone will not will not have the afflictions healed. So that's what the back to the mirror, Rabbi Zer says, Basar Ksiv Bevenir Pa. Adam will Ksiv Bevenir Pa. When it says the word Basar by Tsaras, by this leprosy, it then it uses the word Basar. But when it uses the word um when it uses the word for Adam, it doesn't use the word Venir Pa. So that teaches us that you need to be humble. I'm Rabbi Yochanan Adam. What does the word Adam mean? It stands for Afer. It's Adam. Why is a person called Adam? It stands for Afer Dam Mara, meaning to say that he is like ashes or earth and, and blood and, and is vapor. And therefore, he shouldn't be arrogant. What's Mara, Rashi says? This is the stuff that comes out of the liver. Uh, um, so the bile from the liver. And so therefore, that's what a, a person is. Afar damu mara. You know, you don't, don't get carried away. What is basar? Busha srucha rima. A person is just, basar means humility, putrid, worms. Ika da amre, alternatively, sha'ol. Some say that the, that the, the shin of Basar doesn't stand for the sin of Basar doesn't stand for Srucha, but it stands for Sha'ol, the, the nether world, the sin of Shin, which is very much a shin. Whoever is arrogant, but so nifchas, in the end, he will be diminished and he'll become uh, uh, diminished amongst the men. We see this a lot in Washington today. Somebody, one day, somebody's big, excuse me, the next day they're being indicted. Just the reality that the, one day the person's up, the next day is nobody. And how, what's the source of this? Because it says we're on top of 5b, and, and that the sin of Saras, that the, that the punishment of Saras is called Vulaseis, Vulasapachas. These two words are next to each other. The ain't says, the says, we're on top of 5b, 5b at the top. The ain't says, El Washon Havoa. Says is a reference to. It's a taras, it's leprosy, but it's also a reference to arrogance, as it says, 
This is the high mountains. Vein tapachas al tefilas. Tapachas refers to the lower mountains. As say tzafchunina achas akuhnos chol pas lachem. Tzafchunina tzafchunina means to say, gather me on one of uh, one of the watches of the Kohanim that they gather to me in their mishmar, so that I could, so that I'm able to receive something small like pas lachem. It's humility. He says, come and see just how great are the humble people. Just look how much God appreciates the humility of the humble. When the temple is standing on the Makar of Oa, and a person will bring an Oa offering, the reward for the Oa will be in his hand. If you bring an Oa, you get the reward for an Oa. If you bring a Mincha, if you bring a grain offering, you have the reward for the grain offering in your hand. But if a person carries himself with humility, that, by the way, humility is not low for self-esteem. Humility doesn't think, oh, I can't do anything. It means you just don't think you're better than other people because you, you, you have a gift from Hashem. Humility is a recognition that you're here to serve Hashem. It's not low self-esteem. Anyway, if a person carries himself with humility, the Torah says that that's as though you brought the whole sacrifice, all of the sacrifices, because you've sacrificed yourself. As it says, the sacrifices to God are the broken spirit. Well, not only that, that such a person's prayers are never going to be rejected. As it says, so whoever evaluates his ways in this world, will merit to see the salvation of God. As it states, this sum derech, as it states in the verse, this sum derech are biyesha elkim. And don't read it as this sum derech, but this sham derech. I'll take this sum of this sham derech. When he evaluates his ways, We'll see the salvation of God. So the Gemara says, going back to the Mishnah, that the man has to warn his wife. And how does he warn her? The Mishnah says, if he warns her, not he warns her not to speak with her. Then the Mishnah says, if he warns her not to speak with her, and then she's, if he warns her not to speak with the man, and then he, the, the woman becomes secluded with, and then she speaks with him, that's not enough. To make her drink the bitter water, she has to be secluded. So the Gemara says, "Well, this is the question. It's an internal contradiction." Amris, that first you said, that first he says that he warns her, "Don't speak." He warns her in front of two men, "Don't speak with this man." So we see Alma Dibor Sesira Haku that that the problem that Dibor just speaking with the man that's considered seclusion. And then she'd have to drink the bitter waters. But for other Tani, but then the next line of the mission states, Dibra Imoa Daimutaris Lebesa, that if the woman went ahead after she was born and she spoke with the person she was born about, she's still permitted to be with her husband. So we see, and she's allowed to eat the truma, Alma Dibra Lokuma. We see that speaking is, is nothing. So Amar Abai, Abai says, Hachikamar. This is what our Mishnah is saying. If he says, Al to Debri, don't speak, Vidibra, and she goes out and speaks with that man, or if she said, or if he says, Al to Debri, Vinistera, or if he says, don't speak, and then she goes ahead and secludes herself, that's nothing. But if he says, Al Tistari, don't be secluded, Vidibra, Imo, and she goes and speaks with him, Adai Mutaras Lavesa, Umutaras Lachobachuma, isn't he only warned her? He warned her not to be secluded, and she went and spoke. She's allowed to still be with her husband and eat the truma. But if he warns her not to be secluded, but nilna soi moa base her, and she goes with the man who she was warned against and is secluded with him in a private area, tuma, and she waits the amount of time to commit the adultery, and she's not allowed to return to her husband, and she can't eat the truma until she drinks the bitter waters. The Mishnah had said that if the if the husband warned his wife and then he dies after she had been secluded, then she does chalitza with the husband's brother, meaning to say she removes his shoe and spits something around and she doesn't marry him, but she's now at a yibum 
which which where she would marry him. So the Gemara says, "Am I?" It's Yavim Nami Yibume. Why doesn't she do Yibum? So I'm Rav Yosef. I'm Rav Yatsami Me So Valchav I So Ishacher. The pasuk tells us when a man divorces his wife, she goes out from his house and goes to another man. Well, Ishacher Valu Yavim means she marries another man, but not her husband's brother. She came to the Yibum. So I'm Rav Abaye El Miata Chalitza Nami Lotbei. Well, if she's not eligible for Yibum. Then she shouldn't be required to do chalitza because they often go together. They only do chalitza. You're only required to do chalitza, biblically speaking, in a place where you also would have been required to do yibum. So Amrulay, so therefore Rav Yosef responds to Abaye, Iu isei labal, milo get. If she would have remained married to the husband, she would have required a divorce. Well, if that's the case, hashtanamiti by chalitza. That's why she also now requires chalitza. Alternative version of this discussion is Ista Amri Amr of Yosef. Rav Yosef responds to Abaye, Rahman Amr of Yatsmi, Base of Alchar, Baisal Ishacher. The Torah says that if you find the woman to be adulterous, you divorce her to a Listere or Base because we don't want her to be remain in the home. The Atomeris to Siabim Nami Vume. So we don't want her to remain in the home, and now you shouldn't go do Yibam with her husband's brother. So Abaye says, Amr Bay Amri Ata, La Acher, Botinase. Well, then let's not let her marry somebody else. The lowest rate of basic. We don't want her to destroy that house. <laughs> Why are we letting her get married again if we think she's an adulterer? So Rabbi Yosef responds, I'm away, top of Baba Medalif, Mika Ramina Lawe, Bal Karcha. Yeah, the Yavam, if we force her, the Yavam is obligated to marry her. It's a mitzvah, the Yavim. But, and the Yibam comes before Chalitza, but somebody else, there's no mitzvah to do the Yibam. So we're not forcing that upon them. So therefore, we know it's that's the distinction. Alternatively, Amr of Yosef, of Karo Acher, the Torah calls this person another man, Shame Ben Zugo Shorishom, meaning to say that he is he's not like the first one because the first husband was a good guy. She's out to Rishom in Besa because she's adulterous, so we divorced her. But we call him Acher. Because he's bringing this wicked woman into his house. You want him to do Yibam with her? Let's say she marries a second guy and he dies after she had been commit, uh, suspected of adultery with the first one. She marries a second guy and then he dies. Then we shouldn't allow them to do, we shouldn't require Yibam from the second marriage. The cause of Karacher because the Torah calls him an Acher. So Gemara says, "Yeah, Gabe Dahai Mi Abishem Tov Havikaima." Yeah, but with respect to the second one, she was conducting herself in a good manner, and so therefore, uh, she she has a good name. She has a good name, and that's why Yibam happens. So, so we'll let me just stop the recording, but I could go on a little bit. So the Gemara says,